next thing I want to do is finish the discussion about um, Saint Film's interference. That we started it at the last. Uh, that was the last thing that I started doing last class. So I have a better graph now that I did it last class. So what we're looking at is, uh, say, a piece of glass, a thin piece of glass. This is supposed to be very thin. It looks very wide here, but it's not compared with the wavelength of the light. So uh, if you have light coming in, then part of the light is going to be reflected, and I call that beam uh, light ray or wave one. And then part of that wave is going to go through, right? It's going to pass the top surface and it's going to move down. It's going to hit this boundary and be reflected. Every time a wave finds a boundary, it gets reflected. And then it hits here and part of it is going to, is going to be reflected. I didn't draw that, but part of it continues. Because, and I don't care about that one because the uh, interesting part is what wave one and wave two are going to do because they're moving in the same direction. They have the same wavelength. So if there is any difference in phase between these two waves, uh, it's going to result in constructive interference or destructive interference, right? depending on that, just like the case of the two speakers that we discussed. Right? If there's any difference in phase, then the sound could be completely canceled. So here, if uh, these amplitudes are the same, then a difference in a phase of pi between 1 and 2 will result in no reflection of this piece of glass. So that's a... Uh, if, if that's what you were af after, that's, that's a nice thing to have. If you don't want any reflection of a glassy surface, then that's what you would probably want to do. If you want to put anti-reflection coating on glasses so that uh, you don't get a lot of reflection, which uh, uh, makes uh, uh, your vision not so clear, then you want to try to do something like this, put a coating with a, a specific thickness such that these two waves uh, interfere destructively with each other. So what's the difference? Of course, the <coughs> question, the important question about whether uh, something interferes constructively or destructively, two waves, is what's the phase difference between them? What's the phase difference between two and one? If that phase difference, as I said before, the difference, difference in phase between wave number two that you saw and wave number one, if that difference in phase is a multiple of 2 pi, then we're talking about constructive interference, which uh, is going to result in a strong reflection. But if that difference in phase is an odd multiple of pi, then you get destructive, which means that the reflection is very weak. So to look at the, to uh, find out that phase, of course, we have to ha figure out the phase of 2 and the phase of 1. The question that if you are looking at this for the first time that you will have in your mind probably is a phase with respect to what? Where am I evaluating this phase that I'm putting here and putting here? The answer is you're going to measure the phase with respect to the top surface of the glass. This is the top surface. So just for simplicity, let's assume that the incoming wave has a phase of zero here. So just at the time when you took the picture, when you took this picture, the wave, the light wave coming in had this uh, kind of a snapshot picture, which means that the phase here was zero. So what's the phase of wave two when it comes back to the top surface? Wave two is the one that goes through, bounces off the bottom, goes through, bounces off the bottom. I put it on the side to make it more clear, bounces off here and goes back up and it's going to interfere with one which is over here. So what's the phase of the blue wave when it gets to this point? We know that it had phase equals zero here because it's part of the incoming wave with phase equals zero right here. Right? But what is going to be the, wave here, the phase here? Then notice that there is a reflection here coming from a high index of refraction to a low index of refraction. That reflection does not give you any pi phase that we discussed before. So there is no changing phase of the wave here. It just starts moving in the opposite direction. So the phase that is going to go here is the phase due to having traveled a distance d and d. So a distance of 2d. Okay? And we know how to deal with that. The difference in phase between two points of a wave that are separated by a distance of 2d is the usual equation, k times difference in distance. <coughs> I didn't write it there. 
Okay, so that's how we're gonna do it. Yeah, I wrote it on the top, sorry. I thought I had not. Here. So the difference in phase, uh, the phase of wave number two right here is zero. When it comes back, it comes back with the phase equal to the wave uh, number for the wave moving inside here, which is related to the wavelength, two pi over the wavelength here, times the distance travel, 2D. Okay, so now we know the phase two. Now what's the phase one? The phase of wave number one, which is this one, the reflected one already, when it's at the surface, at the top surface of the glass. Okay, the incoming one has phase zero, but the uh, reflected one, we know that has a phase of pi. Okay, so the phase of number one is just pi. The phase of wave number two is k, which is the wave number inside the glass, I should have put an n here maybe, times 2d, which is 2 pi over the wavelength of light inside the glass, right, because you're looking at the trajectory or the path inside the glass reflected back, so all that motion happened inside the glass, so you have to use the wavelength in the glass, times 2d. So we put that together, so the difference in phase between 2 and 1 is just going to be this, minus pi. The wavelength of uh, light inside glass is related to the wavelength outside uh, by this equation. It's the wavelength outside divided by n, which is the index of refraction. Now where is that coming from? You can see that coming from these equations because the velocity of the waves inside the glass is smaller than the uh, velocity of the waves outside in air. The velocity of light in air is c, and by definition the index of refraction is this, is the ratio between c and v. So the velocity inside the glass, v, is c divided by the index of refraction. If you put that together with the equation for a wave, which is lambda equals v over the frequency, you get this equation, which tells you that uh, the wavelength gets shortened inside the glass. And I want to show you quickly why that makes sense. Oops, not here. <clears throat> it's in a uh, fistlets. And I don't want to go there and come back here, so I just made a quick little movie. Not this one, actually. Not this one, sorry. That's the next one. This one. <coughs> so you have waveforms coming from a medium on the top. They're moving down. And they're moving into a region. They're moving into a region. These waveforms are moving into a region that has a smaller, a smaller uh, velocity. So higher index of refraction here than here. So as they enter, they slow down. Because they have to slow down, then the wavefront behind it catches up with it a little bit. So not only the result is that the wavelength here that is smaller than what you have over here. Okay? So that is just the equation that I just showed you, telling you that the wavelength inside the glass is shorter than the wavelength of light in air. So that equation is here, that I just explained, but we were after the difference in phase between the two waves, right? So we got an expression for that. So what we do now is to say, do I want to have constructive interference? Do I want destructive interference? If that's something under your control, then you will look at that equation and say, okay, this thing, if it's equal to two pi times some any integer m equals zero, one, two, or whatever, you will get constructive interference between the wave two and wave one. Remember that they're both moving up. So if that's the case, if this expression is equal to two pi m, then you will get a strong reflection of the top of that glass. But if this expression, when you evaluate it, happens to be a odd multiple of pi, then what you will get is a weak reflection because the two waves will be interfering with each other. They will be going like this in opposite, uh, doing the opposite uh, thing. <clears throat> so uh, you can look at this equation and say, what's the minimum width of the glass, for example, that will give you uh, destructive interference? 
So you look at this equation and you want to make this equal to a multi all multiple of pi. Actually, the minimum will be uh, to make it equal to zero, right? Because if you make the distance, the thickness of the glass equals to zero, d equals zero. Notice that this is zero, so the difference in phase is pi between the two waves. So when the glass is really thin compared to a wavelength, then the reflection will be destructive. You will uh, kill the reflection of that glass uh, piece. That works for uh, d equals zero, right? You already get a difference of phase of pi or minus pi is the same thing. So that works for d equals zero, that's easy. But then the next one, the next thickness that is not zero will be just replacing, making this expression equal to pi. Right? So then you move this minus pi to the other side, you get a 2 pi, which you cancel with that one. This pi with this one become 2 pi. Cancel that one. You get this. And your expression for the minimum thickness of the glass that would reduce the reflection by a lot will be this. If you play with two slits uh, with 37.9, uh, uh, I uh, suggest that you try to calculate the index of refraction. That's what. Uh, one of the questions in that fistlet is about. So this is the, the piece of glass is gonna be here and I'm gonna start increasing the thickness of it. So they transmit it, this is a plot of the transmitted wave, but just really concentrate on, on the reflected wave, which is what we were talking about. So the reflected wave, um, you're moving here, here, maximum transmission, that means no reflection. That's D1, the thickness that we just uh, found out. That's the first thickness that cancels the reflection. And then there is more because the M in your equation of 2 pi times M doesn't have to be uh, zero. The, the, the next one will be M equal one. And that's the next thickness where you cancel the reflection and different thicknesses of this glass will produce it will cancel the reflection at particular values, specific values, given by the equation that we just wrote. So that is a very 